Jumping is an integral part in most of our gaming experiences. We use jumping to get up and over obstacles, to avoid an attack, to solve a puzzle, and even to congratulate or celebrate with random teammates online. Imagine the gaming world as we know it today without the functionality of a jump button. How would we be able to cross bridges above poison rivers, avoid low strikes during combat, and avoid being swiped by an absurd swinging obstacle? Well, like everything else, there was a time where none of this was possible. But of all things that exist, and will exist, it had to begin from somewhere, right? If you haven't guessed already, today I'll be speaking to you about the history of the jump button within gaming. We will discuss its origins, its evolution, and its importance it plays in gaming. Welcome to a brief history of the jump button. In the late 70s and 80s, the arcade scene was dominated mainly by games such as Pac-Man, Defender and Space Invader. However, games that were closely related to the first game to introduce the jump button at the time i.e. other platformers, were Crazy Climber, Space Panic and Burger Time. You often had to run away or change direction from obstacles coming towards you. With the exception of Crazy Climber, where you climb the windows to reach a target while avoiding the ones that are shut or are shutting, the other two games mentioned heavily relied on climbing stairs. The problems you would often have with these games like Space Panic and Burger Time is that you would often put yourself in a position where you are trapped and unable to escape this being no different from the maze game predecessors like Pac-Man. So, with objects in front coming towards you, there's no way you could escape from going backwards and no stairs for you to save you either. How do you even move forward? You don't. The only way you move forward is by jumping. Or you can't do this on concrete. The introduction of one of gaming's most iconic characters in history, if not the most iconic character, Mario, originally was known as Jumpman. In Donkey Kong, this brought about a new and exciting opportunity for gaming everywhere by taking a massive leap away from the ladder-based platformer design that was popular at the time. The use of the jump button should not be understated here. DR Geno wrote in his 2018 blog post, Game Literacy, a brief history of the jump is that in Donkey Kong, the jumping mechanic is vital to continue on to different stages and are used for different reasons. Firstly, to avoid enemies, which the enemies were like barrels, little fireballs, and then to cross platforms quicker than the ladders would allow you to do so. And finally, to use a jump button to cross platforms in order to finish the stage. You weren't able to complete this stage without mastering the jump button as a central mechanic. In the first stage, jumping was primarily used to avoid the barrels. In the second stage, jumping could be used to cross platforms quicker than the ladders would allow you to do so. In the third stage, the infamous 75 meter stage. <laughs> in this stage, the players had to use the jump button to cross platforms in order to finish the stage. There was simply no way to complete this stage without mastering the jump button as the central mechanic. Soon after Donkey Kong's release came several other video games with a focus on jumping. In 1982, Activision released Pitfall. In Pitfall, the player must navigate his or her way through a jungle, jumping over the rolling logs, scorpions, snakes and onto swinging vines. In Moon Patrol, the player controls an ever-moving vehicle on the surface of the moon. Gameplay is a mixture of shooting enemies and jumping over obstacles. As told by Jason in the History and Significant of Jumping in Games article, the next major platform was Super Mario Bros in 1985 the game that arguably saved gaming. According to Chaplin and Ruby, in their Smart Bomb book released in 2005, Super Mario Bros was probably the first game labelled as a platformer. Enthusiasts dubbed Mario Bros a platform because gameplay largely involved guiding Mario or Luigi towards a series of jumps, bumps and leaps in order to progress through the game world, all while negotiating a near endless onslaught of kooky enemies such as Goombas, Koopa Troopers, Lakachus, However, before we get carried away with the mechanics of jumping within Super Mario Bros, there is still one flaw the jump button had at this point in gaming, and that was you could only be able to perform the jump button once. Here comes the introduction of the double jump. The Arginino mentions that there is a rumour that the double jump has its origins from glitches. Games that coded their jump incorrectly would be unable to tell when the characters were on the floor or in the air. This will allow characters to jump in mid-air as if they were on the ground. Turns out this style of jumping was actually fun and it became accepted in, as an actual gaming mechanic. At least that's how the oral tradition goes. It's not entirely clear which game first encountered this glitch. However, the game that we do think for the concept of the double jump is the 1985 Dragon Buster from Namco. Actually, we owed a lot of the aspects of modern gaming to it. It was the first game to use a life meter, the first game to have a hub world map linking dungeons and one of the first to combine action adventure with RPG elements. It also invented the double jump. Double jump has many uses. One 
being a second chance where your initial jump could potentially put you in harm's way. The double jump could also allow you to jump further and explore areas that you cannot reach before or dodge an opponent's attack in midair and much more. For example, the use of double jumping in a game such as Ori, the Will of Wisps, during the game, the use of the double jump allows you to explore parts of the land that would normally be unreachable. It could also be used as a safety net when attacking an enemy, but needing to quickly dodge as it's ready to attack while you're already in mid air. The use of the double jump came in handy particularly during boss fights and the final boss fight. This is also applicable to the triple jump mechanics within the game. But the evolution of jumping did not just stop at double jump and triple jumps. Games also incorporated jumps such as the classic wall jump. My memories of the wall jump back to Super Mario 64. Trying to master that wall jump, once I got it mastered, I loved using it everywhere I could. It's also known as a triangle jump, and as you know, allows you to hit a wall and propel yourself off of it. The wall jump was made mostly famous by Mario. Head jump as well, as we know, you could probably relate the head jump origins back to the first original Super Mario Bros. game, where you, Mario would usually kill a, an enemy like, such as a Goomba, jump on its head, jump on a Koopa Trooper and get out of its shell and jump on the shell to use it against other enemies. That is some of the classic and origins of jumping. But thank you very much for listening and watching this and I hope you enjoyed the video. Tune in for more content coming for us soon. Take care and have a good day guys.